This video will show you how to do a two-sample t-test assuming the variances are equal. We also call this a pooled t-test. The previous video showed you how to do a t-test assuming unequal variances. The big assumption there was that the two unknown population standard deviations were equal. That is to say that the value sigma was equal to sigma 1 was equal to sigma 2. So all of the variances are equal. We might take independent random samples from some normal population and we might know what or we might not know what sigma 1 and sigma 2 are, that is they're unknown, but we might think that they're about equal to one another. That is sigma 1 is approximately equal to sigma 2. In that case we might have a new number of degrees of freedom. We can add up both observations collected in each sample and take away two. So this is an example of how we might do and think about a pooled t-test. Here you see two normally distributed populations, but they have unequal variances. So if you think back to the fertilizer example that we just went through, is it appropriate to make the assumption that the variances in those were equal? We could go take a look at what the variances were, or the standard deviations, for both of those samples. They were not necessarily equal in that example. And so here's the test statistic we'll use for a pooled t-test, assuming the variances are equal. The major part is that we have a different term, what we call the pooled standard deviation, which we denote S sub P. And in this case, we take N1 minus 1, multiply it by the sample variance, and then we take n2 minus 1 and multiply it by the sample variance for the second sample. And then in the denominator, we add the number of observations for each sample and minus 2. That will go into our calculation for the test statistic. And the test statistic that you see here is almost exactly the same as what we saw for the test with unequal variances except we're going to add a term here that calculates the pooled standard deviation. So the denominator of this test statistic is calculated a little bit differently. So let's think back to the fertilizer treatments. But now let's run a statistical test where we assume equal variances. All of the data are the same, but we'll calculate a different test in this case. This time, we'll pool the standard deviations and conduct a two-sample t-test, assuming equal variances. Now, we're going to go through a calculation like that on, uh, in a little bit, but we could also calculate the 95% confidence intervals. And so here's how you might do that for, uh, for this case, assuming uh, we're doing a pooled t-test. We can take the difference between the two, let's call it y bar sub 1 and y bar sub 2, and we can take the plus or minus some value of t, and again we're going to get this value of t from the t table, n1 plus n2 minus 2 is our degrees of freedom, alpha divided by 2 is our level of significance, and then we can multiply that but by everything that's in the denominator within the test statistic calculation, that is the pooled the pooled standard deviation, and then uh, one over both of the sample sizes. So when we do that with the fertilizer data, uh, we can plug in the numbers here. Note that from our t-table, we'll find a t-statistic of 2.101. When we pool the standard deviation, we get 53.3, and then we, we multiply by this term under the square root sign. That includes the number of observations. And so here we get a value 38.1 plus or minus 51.1. And so remember, these are bushels per acre. And so we can think about the difference. How we might write that is the, uh, the difference between mu1 and mu2, or fertilizer A and fertilizer B, is uh, somewhere between negative 13 and 89.2 bushels per acre. 
So you can note that this confidence interval contains the value zero, which might be something to, uh, to understand for the future. So to summarize both of the two sample t-test approaches, if we assume the variances for a population one and two are not equal, we can use this test, test statistic. If we assume the variances for population one and two are equal, we can pull the standard deviations and look at the test statistic that you see below.